All right, what's going on, everybody? It's Bobby Skinner, Talking Giants, and welcome to the Week 4 Film Review. We're going to go chronologically through the game. Now, I've been trying to keep these to, like, 16 to 20 plays. I think I have, like, 25, and that's what happens when the Giants win. There's so many things I want to share. Um, a, a lot of good stuff in this game, some not great, um, and I'll go over... Here's my big picture thoughts on what offensively they did scheme-wise and defensively what they did scheme-wise. Because sometimes looking at individual plays, you kind of get lost in what the big picture is. Offensively, I like what I saw out of Jason Garrett. Um, now, I need more than a one-game sample size for Jay to, to you know be like, oh, wow, Jason Garrett's really changed because we've seen him have good uh, games and then go regress to what he was. And I think having his wide receiver core of Kenny Galladay, Kadarius Toney, and John Ross, not, non-timing wide receivers who all like do different things, forced him to do some stuff. And you saw some three-level reads, and you're going to see that in this, where it's a high, middle, low, and it's like, and that's where Jones is reading. Uh, they use a lot of two tight end, max protect, two-man routes, which we're going to... Mean, I think we have like four or five of those in here. The John Ross touchdown was that. So some good stuff there. Defensively. Not a bad game, but not, you know certainly not a, a like a, a good like signature game for the defense. Patrick Graham is doing some things where last year they almost never had a light box. Th this game, it was almost exclusively like that. Like you're going to see when we go through running plays and all plays, it's like they have the same amount of guys in the box as they have offensive linemen, which leaves an open gap. And when you don't have Blake Martinez, when you don't have Dalvin Tomlinson, it's hard to defend that. And that's why they got gashed for 170 yards on the run. And I know the NFL is moving more towards like too high safety, you know, force teams to really like dink and dunk and take you know take the you know take the positive gains but not get the big plays, and that's how teams um, are playing defense. And I get that. And the Giants are aren't good in yards, but they are good in points defensively. But man, it's frustrating seeing a team run on you like that. Um, and they gave up a, uh, a couple of big plays and one play that should have should have been a touchdown and end up turning into an interception. Obviously, so um, we'll get into it. All right, first play offensively. I talked about three level re reads. This is on third down. This, I guess, uh, is it incomplete by by Daniel Jones. The th first third down of the game. So you got this receiver coming deep. You got him, uh, him you know, uh, you know, Galladay deep, taking two defenders. Tony right here, two defenders, and you got Evan Ingram here. So you got high low read. It's a backside sale. Jones and I and we'll go through the protection. I feel like Jones, if you're gonna step up, rip it, man. You've got it. You got this defender turned his back. He's not getting there. Rip it to Evan Ingram here. Like that's a lot of space. Hit that. Hit that. Hit that. Hit that. Again, that's the first drive of the game. They end up punting, and it could have been a nice third down conversion where you get this and you get, you know, up to the 40, 45 yard line. Protection wise, you're gonna see. I mean, they put everybody on the line. You know, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, you got eight. You got eight guys on the line. Six, uh, seven blockers. Obviously, they're dropping some people back. You know, they're not gonna. They're not leaving one, two, these three players for you know these three receivers. So obviously, people are gonna drop back. Let's see it from the other end. Oh, but I didn't put the protection in there. Damn it. Anyways. So you got picked up here, picked up here, 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 and you got a free rusher right here. So good job by Jones stepping up and feeling that, but rip that into Ingram. Defensively, we're going to go through a good play. Dexter Lawrence. This guy, and he's it's shown up since his like first game in the NFL, really. You know, like his ability to like track screens is kind of crazy. Like he immediately, like he wins pass reps like that sometimes. And just immediately, like, I'm getting to the back. I'm getting to the back. I feel that. I sense that. Like, that's a really good play by Dex. You know, when he had a deflection either on the play before or after this one. So, really nice play by Dex or Lawrence on that one. Next play, we got uh, third down. I love this from Tay Crowder and Logan Ryan. So, the Giants played a lot of zone in this game, but on third down is when they brought out their man coverage. And this is man, you know, this is man all across the board. And you got man here, man, 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 man. One safety under, one safety high. 
Jameis gets out of the pocket. And I love Tay Crowder leaving his guy. Because it's it's a first down if you don't if you don't get this. So take a chance that he messes up the throw. You know, your safe your robber safety comes down and makes a play. And that's exactly what happens. We'll see it from the other view. But I love when linebackers play instinctually and aggressive. And that's what that's one of the reasons I really like Tay Crowder. Now, do I want my inside linebacker one? Probably not. But again, like he's in coverage here. Don't don't just give these guys easy first downs. Go to make a play. There's a lot higher chance of Jameis making a bad throw, a running back dropping it, or Logan Ryan being a ball hawk and getting his hand in there and swatting it than it is that Jameis Winston is just going to stumble and fall. Although if there's one QB who would do that on a five-yard run, it would be Jameis Winston. So good stuff, good instincts from the linebacker. And uh, t- t- Tay Crowder and the safety, Logan Ryan. Next play. The Kadarius Tayoni show. Third and 18. Look at I mean, look at all this space. Third and 18. We're not giving up a first down. We'll take anything underneath. Tony catches. <laughs> you got Blocker here. Hernandez does a good job. And Tony turns a third and 18 to a first down. Chain mover. I mean, listen, I'm not going to sit here and break down this. I'm like, well, let me go and uh, break down how he broke all these tackles. Plays up. I'll just do Chris Berman. Whoop! Cut back in. I mean, first down. <laughs> Knows where the chains are. Gets himself a first down. Good stuff. We'll see it from this angle. Good job by Will Hernandez getting out here. Kyle Rudolph. And I'm not going to get out on you for that one cover off. But good stuff. Next play. And this is what they ran. They ran a lot of different variations of this. Where you got two tight ends down here. The running back and then two wide receivers. So you play under center play action. And this works really well because Andrew Thomas, you can put him on an island. And you get like double, you get double teams all across the board for the most part. So now... Ingram blocks and releases. Saquon doesn't have anyone in the block, so he goes out into the flats. But you get John Ross with his speed. Clearing out. Clears out these two guys. Kenny Galladay with the dig route. You see Ross clear, like clearing these guys out. Clearing space out. That's why I always chart the deep concepts as two 15 plus yard routes. Because that's when you're occupying more deep defenders. I mean, good anticipation from Jones here too. I mean, look at when he's pulling the trigger on this. Look where this defender is here. Like this is this is a tough throw, and puts it just right on Galladay. Good timing. These guys getting on the same page, man. It's beautiful. I mean, that's great anticipation. I think I have the view from the back end. But again, play action. And look at this, baby. Look at this. Look at this freaking pocket. Step up. Andrew Thomas dominating. These two doubling. Double up here. Step up. I mean, remember last year and the year before? It was like the issue people were getting on Daniel Jones is like he never he doesn't know how to step into a throw. So it's like he never has a any room in front of him to step up. Just puts this ball right on Galladay. Bam. Galladay get up field. Good stuff. Galladay, don't get a concussion, dude. He Galladay runs tough, man. We're going to see that at the end of the game, too. We saw it last week. Like, that dude runs tough. Next play. So, this is the third and one. And this is a... I put a big if on this play. I love this play call if you're going for it on fourth down. Third and one can be the most dangerous play, you know, down for an offense. Like, you never want to get on third down as an offense. But third and one can be so dangerous because that defense has to sell out to stop you from getting the first down. Which means they're going to be covering things short. And so that's when I, that's when I love taking chances. That's when you could get some big plays. You're going to get favorable matchups because you could go for it on fourth down. So what's so frustrating is I love this play call because on fourth down you should be going for this. Like, you can run against this front. You know, line up the same way on fourth down or spread it out. 
you know, run draw if you have to. Like, there's fourth and one should be an easy down to get. Daniel Jones was seven of eight on fourth and five and or less in 2020. And the one was the one that they didn't get was a fourth and inches QB sneak, which I I kind of hate the QB sneak. But anyways, this is called Y leak. You got these two guys coming across to try and occupy. I mean, the Saints do a great job picking this up. And what you want is Caden Smith showing block. And then releasing back here and being like, it can leave guys wide open. But I mean, credit to the defense. They do, they do a great job picking this up. I mean, not only do they stay in man coverage with wins, but you got this safety over the top. So you can't, Jones can't even try and put a good ball on Caden. So the play's dead. Now, what I like last year, they did this versus Dallas. Last year, they did this versus Dallas. And the linebacker picked it up and, like, you know, covered Caden Smith. But there was a check down wide open. And Devontae Freeman had, like, an 18-yard catch. And they got down to the three-yard line. So, what I would like is to maybe do this play action to the left. You know what I mean? And then you could put this running back out in the flats. Or something. Get some, Just get somebody out in those flats where it's not a, t a total all or nothing. But I'm, I'm, I'm nitpicking there. I like the play call. Um, but they don't go for it on fourth down, which is frustrating. And they miss a field goal. Next play, what do we got? Third and man, third and five man coverage. Awesome job by the defense here. Man up, you know, you got tight man coverage all across the board. You're showing blitz, and you got one, you got one corner playing off. So, Jameis wants to go to that guy, but when you could, when you're the one guy playing off, you can play aggressively. And you watch. I mean, as soon as he op as soon as this guy uh, wide receiver gets down the line, Adore is meeting him there, and it's third and five, so you got yourself some space. Bam! So it's a catch. Fourth down, stop. Good job by Adore. We got good man coverage all across the board. Good man here, man here, man here. Safety high, safety low. You know they're putting a focus on Kamara. Balls out. Good job, and I love it up front. What you do is give them give this offensive line tough. Uh, you know, don't let them know exactly what you got. You got your edge guys right here. You got Leonard at nose tackle. And you got your linebacker and Pep uh, right here. Shift these guys out. Shift these guys in. Put these guys on the outside. Try and create one on ones. And then Leonard Williams turns it into a stunt. No change Zimmon is coming down the pipe. So if Jameis doesn't throw it to a, a two yard pass on third and five, and he's trying to move that ball downfield. Well, now you got O'Shane Zimmon as running free. So, good third down stuff. So, I actually I like what I saw at a third down from Graham was when he got a little more aggressive. And I guess that is part of what they're doing. And it's why they're doing decently points-wise. Just not great yardage. Next play. Oh, can I get and John Ross? So, again, we got 12 personnel. Two tight ends. Two wide receivers. And Jones just puts puts one on the kid. You know, they're they're playing two high safeties, but these guys are are, you know, they're creeping down. They want to stop the run. So on the play action, steps forward. And at this point, it's like you're not going to keep up with John Ross. This safety's not going to keep up with John Ross. And you'll see from the other end, Jones does a good job. He looks down here. Keeps keeps Marcus Williams honest for just a second. Looks down here. Turn his hips, point his feet, and just rips it on him. I mean, this 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 is a beautiful throw. Great catch from John Ross. Hold on to the damn ball, but can I get it? I mean, feels good. Again, play action, sucking guys up. Great protection in front of him. I mean, you know, you want to watch the protection go on the O-line report, but there you go. Like, Thomas just balling hands inside right here. Good stuff. Kyle Rudolph basically playing tackle. Step up in it. And just rips it. Look how beautiful this ball looks. This might be like the, one of the prettiest damn. Just on a rope. Like that. I, I've, you know. I've watched that like 20 times today. This throw. Just right down center field. Bam. Take chances. Take chances. Especially on first down. Next play. 
So this is kind of an example of what the Giants did defensively all game. You have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you have three, six. You got seven blockers. So you got six D line, six people in the box. So even if you had seven people in the box, you're still, you're still, you don't have all your gaps covered. Like let's pretend there's a, a you know, linebacker in here. You have this gap filled, this gap filled, this gap filled, this gap filled. This gap filled and this gap filled, you have both the outside gaps filled, or if they bounce out, you have these gaps filled, and you're going to see how it screws them into this run play. I mean, they're just outnumbered, and I get that this. I really think this was part of the plan for Patrick Graham was to try and lull these guys to sleep and and let them run and run and, and not get those big chunk plays. But man, and I get like that's what some of the best coaches in the league are doing. But you know, when I see the the Rams do it, they have Aaron Donald. You know, I see the Broncos do it, they got Vaughn Miller. And when Bradley Chubb's healthy, they have Bradley Chubb. We just don't have the pass rush, I think, to, to do this successfully. So again, look, everyone's playing their gap. But you got to have guys that can two-man gaps. And Lorenzo Carter has to play this backside gap. Like, he, ha he has to cover for two gaps. Raglan's playing inside here. And it's simple for Kamara. Okay, he's playing inside. I go off of it. And then they were getting that in the run game all day. Like, I put that one in there because it was even more so because they had the extra block of it. Like, that's frustrating to watch, man. Like, watching your, t watching your team get run on like that, it's just frustrating. I get the thinking behind it, but, man, it's, it's painful to watch. Next play. I just turned my mic off for a cough. Okay, this was the third down conversion for the Saints versus Dory Jackson. So again, man coverage all across the board. That's what we want. You got Alvin Kamara, who had zero catches in this game. You got you know uh, the outside linebacker dropping back, and then you got him covered for. So they can't go can't go to Kamara. Can't go to Kamara, and you send four. Safe one safety high. You got good. We got good man coverage all across the board. It feels like right here. Like even this isn't horrible. Now, this is a really good throw by Jameis. But if you know you got the safety up high, why not go inside leverage on this? Why not don't let him get inside leverage on you? Play in, on that inside hip because you got the safety over the top. And if you do that, you're that might turn into a pass deflection instead of a third down conversion. You know, they're at the... Where are they at? You know, they're trying to kick a 55-yard field goal with Algic Rosas, who just got cut for missing a 56-yard field goal. Instead of getting, you know, seven points on this drive. So it's not, it's not horrible coverage, but there's, there's details that could be better. When you got that safety at the top, know what, know what you've got. Doesn't help you don't get any pass rush. Jameis has all day to throw. I mean, it's, it's a great throw by Jameis, you know. So I don't want to nitpick this play too much. You know, the offense gets paid to make plays too. This is a this is a perfect throw. But you know what? We pay, you know. Ador and Adore has been a good signing. Like, but, um, you know, I, that play hurt. So here, and this is the play that turned everyone to hate Jabril Peppers. I mean, again, man coverage. This is a tough cover, man. Like, watch other strong safeties in the league. Let's not bring up the fact that Jabril Peppers had the most pass deflections for strong safeties last year in the NFL. Was top five for safeties and tackles for a loss. I think he's being miscast right now. Why not bring in that extra, you know, linebacker in the box and have those plus one boxes and bring Peppers down here? I mean, this is a losing battle for him. Sorry. But, I mean, you know, that's a former wide receiver converted tight end. That's just a, that's a losing battle. You know, I'm not, I, I don't want to, you know. It's, it's the first touchdown he's given him. I know he's given up plays to Fant. And, uh, you know, he gave the play up at the end of the game to Kyle Pitts. But, Man, co playing, playing, say, you know, co man coverage on tight ends is really hard in the league. I don't think we watch other teams play it. So, I, I think Peppers are being miscast, and you'll see on on uh, on some plays why I think Xavier McKinney is 
not playing well. Never, never mind the forget that he's missed tackles. So this is play action. This is called a Yankee concept. Remember the touchdown to Darius Slayton versus Steelers? This is that. And they do it with Taysom Hill underneath. But it's essentially essentially a cover three beater. Because in cover three you have, you know, three guys covering the deep thirds. You have the deep safety. So what you're what it's trying to do is get this the safety to play up and cut this out, which he does. And then that allows the wide receiver to have all of the middle of the field to work with. And what I, and the you know the the longest pass James Bradbury has given up as a giant on this play. So I think kind of know your personnel that it's Taysom Hill on this on this deep crosser right here. But this deep post, I mean, good throw by Jameis. You can see how James Bradbury right here turns his hips open, and as soon I mean, good job by Callaway. As soon as, as Bradbury uh, turns his hips open to the sideline, he gets inside. That's a beautiful route run. That's a bad. That is a bad play by Bradbury, even though the safety should be over the top. But uh, a a good ball. So speaking of bad tackling, let's see some bad tackling. That's bad tackling. That's like when some grown man plays like football with young kids and takes it way too seriously and they're playing tackle football. I mean, take Crowder. I know you're going for the ball, dude, but wrap up. Aziz, you're on there too. Like you guys should be you guys should be tackling him right there. Bad. Austin Johnson, you should be tackling him right there. Adora Jackson, you should be tackling him right there. James Bradbury, you should be tackling him right there. Leonard Williams. Hustle, dude. I know it's the play might look like it's over, but hustle. You're trying to stop. This is, you know, you never know what's going to happen on the next play. Like his, I mean, that ball's, you know, he's got that ball sticking out there. That could have been a fumble. Like, I know Joe Judge and Patrick Graham are killing them for that play. I just know they are. Now, I mean, that's 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 embarrassing from a defense to watch, to watch Taysom Hill do that to you. And I get Taysom Hill's a, a nice utility player, but you just... That's that's embarrassing to happen. Taysom Hill shouldn't be doing that to the New York Giants defense. Next play again. 12 personnel. You got two tight ends, two wide receivers, a running back. And they ran they ran the Yankee. Well, guess what? We're running it too. And on this job, they cover the deep posts by, by Kenny Galladay. They cover it. Safety plays deep. Cover it. Well, guess what? Because it's covered, this corner's following. Now you got Kadarius Tony on the crosser. If you block this up well and get it versus the right coverage, which they do, cover three, it wins. Like I'll give that's what I'll give Jason Garrett credit to. They have stuck to this, and it's worked for them. Again, good protection up front. Andrew Thomas. I mean, everyone's doing their job out here. This is beautiful, beautiful protection. Daniel Jones able to step up into it. Puts the ball on Tony. Big gain. Big gain for the New York Giants. Running a Yankee concept. And we're recording our mailbag early today to watch the Yankee playoff game. Next one. What do we got? Okay. This, you would be like, why am I pull, watch, uh, showing you this play? So they're running like a, a form of stick. You see Barkley's on this clear out fade. Evan Ingram on the out. Corner playing off. Simple throw. Why am I putting that in? Because watch the way Marcus Lattimore peeks on this. Watch how he's got his eyes on this. And peeks on this. And Saquon realizes, it's like, hey, he's peeking on that. And I'm going to be open. We're going to come back to that. Next play. Again, 12 personnel. Two tight ends. Two wide receivers. Tight spacing. Play action, good protection, and now we got a flood, a three-level read. You got Tony deep, Galladay here, running back here, three levels, wide open, wide open. That's the stuff we've been begging for out of Jason Garrett. This is what Daniel Jones did well his rookie season. Give him this, let him get better. Big play, 17-yard completion. Protection up front. 
beautiful, beautiful pocket, man. I mean, watch the O-line report, but good job all day by this offensive line pass blocking. So good stuff. This is the Rudolph catch. Rudolph's so slow. <laughs> so you got, again, John Ross as a decoy running the post. You got Saquon in motion. Saquon on motion occupies this corner. He's got his eyes on, you know, on the QB and Saquon. Ross right here. And you could even maybe argue that, jo that Jones could have ripped it into Ross right here. But he makes the right read. This linebacker sits. This safety's playing deep. Put it on Kyle Rudolph. Good read. Good throw. And you get down to the three. Surely they scored a touchdown, right? They did not. All right. Fake toss. Play action. They sent that Yankee thing I was talking about before. One guy deep across, you know, through the middle of the field. One guy coming across. Giants are playing two high safeties. And Xavier McKinney, man, he got beat on this versus the, the Broncos with Kenny, uh, uh, versus with Hamler. And he got bailed out by a drop. I mean, I just don't know what's going through McKinney's head right now. Like, you see this guy coming up. Bail. 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 Like, I don't know. What, what is he expecting here? I just, I don't know. Like, you got him playing this underneath. Ryan is not going to get out here and make this play. I just, I've been disappointed in McKinney's play. He, I don't think he's made any plays. I think he's had some busted coverages, and he missed his, missed his tackles. Like, I know Peppers has been getting some heat. Aim that heat at, at McKinney Austin. McKinney should be playing more reps than Jabril Peppers. Good throw by D, uh, Jameis. Should be a touchdown. Honestly, should have been a game changer, but... Leonard Williams, good job. Play inside, run, swim. You get a holding call. And if he doesn't get held, you know, that play does probably get broken up. Or at least Jameis gets smacked. So it's, you know, they didn't give us the game. Yeah, like it was a legit holding penalty. But still, that's that's uh, that's bad on McKinney regardless. So then the next play, the Saints give us a gift. They put Taysom Hill in. <laughs> they just basically tell him to launch it. Like, just kind of wild. It's not. It'd be one thing if like they had all these guys playing down here, like trying to stop the run because Taysom Hill has been running on them. Just no. Give James Bradbury credit. He went up and mossed this dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's the cornerback. Like, for Bradbury to go up and high point that ball, like, this isn't a gimme. This is a good play by Bradbury. You know, 90% of corners probably don't intercept that. They just get a pass breakup. So, I know that that was a really dumb decision by the Saints, but, you know, Giants, you got to take advantage of those opportunities. And that's what, you know, that's what football is about, is taking advantage of the opportunities. Other teams are going to make mistakes. Can you take advantage of those opportunities? Here, I love this. The Dallas, they got Micah Parsons on this side, who bites at everything. You put Tony in orbit motion around. Now, they hand it off to Barkley, but it's, the, it's essentially the triple option. You freeze up this defender. You got him coming out here. Solder works up the second level. Nice run. Nice five-yard run. Next week, Micah Parsons is going to crash down on this. And Jones is going to hold it. And you're going to have the speed option with him and Kadarius Tony versus one defender. And that defender's probably... I don't know. But it's, it's, I'm, I feel like we're going to get a big play out of that versus Dallas. I know Dallas has been a better defense, more disciplined, but... I still think we're gonna. I, th I think I think that's gonna happen. Because there's gonna be a big play to come out of that. There's and there's a second thing I'll give Garrett credit for. I think he's used Tony well with motion the last two games. Here, this is the, the other Taysom Hill touchdown run. I mean, look at we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blockers. How many guys do we have in the box? Six. I mean, that means there's two uncovered gaps, and then they pull with it. I mean, it's just easy. You got down block here. He goes here. You know, the you know wham block, pull. I mean, it's easy. You know, I can't even be mad at the defense. I'm mad at the defense coordinator for giving him, them this run. 
That's frustrating. Touchdown Saints. Uh, what do we got on this? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Where are where are we at? Oh, Tony RPO. Simple RPO pulls a linebacker up. He bites. Jones, turn your hips. Throw to Tony. Nothing special, right? Well, today's Tony is something special. Where he turns a seven yard gain. Into a 19 yard gain. Gets you in Saints territory. Oh, here's what else I wanted. You know what something I forgot about was Thomas whacking the dude on the third and 18. But it is what it is. You can go find it. Good job. Next play, what do we have on this? Okay, Giants get the ball back down 11. We talked about that stick play, right? Same exact thing. You're going to have Barkley on a clear out fade. He told Jones he's peaking. Ingram on the Ingram on the out. Jones uses his eyes. Lattimore's looking the backfield. He peaks, he peaks. And the game and play over. Play over. Jones knows where he's going. As soon as that peak shows, that ball's out of his hands. And Saquon finishes. We'll see from the back end, Daniel Jones' eyes. But this is I did a full breakdown of this on on Twitter and Instagram if you want to check it out. But watch Jones' eyes. He's looking at he's looking at Ingram the whole way. But he's really looking, he's really looking at Lattimore. Gives the pump. Bam. Turn your hips. And put that ball on Saquon Barkley. And you got yourself a Giants touchdown. If you want to see the two-point conversion, I put it on the O-line report. Next play. What do we got? Second and 14. Good pass rush. Maybe like the only good, real, like really good pass rush of the game. Turns it into third and 14. Man coverage across the board. Good job everywhere. Good coverage. And Jameis is forced to throw a bad throw. Let's look at it up front. Austin Johnson and Larry Williams. Great job. Let's watch Austin Johnson first. Swim. Larry Williams. Stunting around. Disrupt him. Throws the ball in the dirt. Throws the ball in the dirt. Beautiful. <clears throat> Here's a big play. I'm not even going to break down concept. Kenny Galladay catches it. He's being wrapped up. You got Malcolm Jenkins right here. And that's called want to. I don't know if the Giants win the game without that play. Contested catch. I mean, that's just a hard catch to make. But to have someone on your back while taking this hit, bouncing off. Big play. Big play, not in the not in the way that uh, you know Kenny Galladay has always made those big plays, but it, a big play, kick a field goal. You got overtime. This is surprisingly a good curl route and timing by Daniel Jones and John Ross up here. I mean, one John Ross is trying to sell deep with the hitch and go. You see, he gives that little stutter, that hitch and go, to just really sell that corner deep, get his hips turned and bailing because it's John freaking Ross, you know, combined 40 time record. Opens outside. Good catching to open open up overtime. And look at this timing. This is John Ross's first game with the Giants. I mean, don't Jones is pulling the trigger right now. When Ross turns around, that ball's already halfway there. Which is expected on Curl Ross to win on these Curl Ross, but like to have that trust in overtime, that's that's awesome stuff. Good stuff out of John Ross, who says he doesn't want to be just a one trick pony. Here, the play before the game winner, flood. And again, it's a three level read. You got John Ross going deep. He's gonna occupy this corner, this safety. You got Ter Kadarius Tony on the whip route. He occupies him. This corner gets lost in coverage. Easy throw. Easy read for Daniel Jones. Again, when you attack downfield, you take advantage of defense's mistakes. And those, mis and those mistakes get turned into 
the game changing plays. And I think Jones, even if that corner plays with good coverage, I think Jones is going here on this play. I mean, it's third down, like he's going there. And then the game winner. Saquon, good job, man. Best run of the day by Saquon. Billy Price totally misses the linebacker. Skura tries to save him. Gets out. Jump, cut. Touchdown. Giants win. And the Giants freaking win. Get get a win on the board. So it's always good to do these after a win. Um, so like and subscribe to the channel. Check out the o report. Check out tomorrow's stat report. Check out the podcast. All that good stuff. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys. See you on the next one. See you on, see on whatever we put out next. Until then, let's go Big Blue. And how about, how about a freaking win, man? It feels good to win.